everybody, Carla with Carla's Clever Crafts. Uh, tonight I'm going to be working on a pet lover's wreath. This one says, your heart belongs to me. It's pink and white and has some cute little gray paw prints. So um, what I did with this one is I selected my mesh, matched up with my sign. Um, it's a real light pink, a little bit lighter than the sign, but that creates a nice contrast. And then the letters heart to me are, um, they have a t uh, iridescent glitter on them. So I chose to pair up that pink with this white iridescent mesh. The pink mesh came from bbcrafts.com if you're wanting to look for that. And then this iridescent white um, came from Hobby Lobby. So then to um, top it off, when I do my top layer of mesh, um, I have this pink and off-white that we're going to use to go around the sign on the top layer. And I thought that is a very, very close match in the pinks. And then to choose my ribbons, I wanted to say, I always try to, um, I, I start designing my wreaths based on my sign. I try to, although I don't always, um, try to stick to a three color scheme. So tonight I'm going to be pairing this cute gray puppy dog paw print ribbon, which matches our gray paw prints and gray lettering in our sign. And I'm going to be matching that with this solid pink. And then I have this really pretty, um, this gray ribbon. It's gray in the background with silver edging. And then it's got white and iridescent glitter polka dots on it. So I thought that that tied in very nicely with my other selections. And then my final ribbon um, that I'm going to be using is this cute little, it's Cupid with heart and love letters. And then the love letters are flying and they have wings on them and the wings are outlined in gray. So I thought that also matched really nicely. Pet love is uh, year round, not just for Valentine's Day. So We'll go ahead and get started on this. I started before I came on, just so we, you know, it didn't take us as long. Um, I will show you what I did. I rotated on the base. I did the pink and white, and we're doing cruffles tonight. And I just rotated those around first. I've saved a few here to do on camera to make sure anybody watching will know how I placed that mesh. And then I also uh, went ahead and started the ribbon tails, but we'll go ahead and finish the mesh and then I'll talk about um, how I placed the ribbon tails on there, what sizes I cut. Also, I'll let you know where I got those from. So I did pink last here. So my next, um, next one will be the iridescent white. Let me see if I can load in my comments real quick. So to do the cruffle, I have my mesh pieces cut to between 16 and 17 inches long. I lay it out flat with the, at the part that curls up naturally facing upward. And then I'm just going to fold it over one, two, three, four, make it a nice little curl on the end. And then I use a clip or a post pen, whatever you have that can just hold your curl in place. Turn your mesh around with your pen facing away from you. Do the same thing on the other end. Two, four. So now we have two curls on each end. We're going to turn our curls face down and we're going to scrunch right up the middle of the mesh, little small sections at a time. And that creates a ruffle. So that's how they came up with the name cruffle. We have two curls and, and a ruffle. Then you remove your pen and you should have what looks like a bow. When we place it into our wreath on this particular design, design, we're putting the finished edge to the inside and the outside. 
And that is the way we will place all of the ones around the bottom row. Oh, I forgot to tell you, I'm using a 14 inch metal wire ring from the Dollar Tree. And it is wired with six pipe cleaners on the inside and 12 pipe cleaners around the outside. So right now we're working only on these 12 on the outside. So when you cut your mesh for the bottom, you will need six of these pink and six of these white to go all the way around the base. Okay, and if you're not sure how to wire the pipe cleaners on with the six on the inside and the 12 on the outside, you can check out some of my earlier videos and I go over how to do that. So we're just doing the same thing. We used the white iridescent, so now we're using the light pink. So your curls down and scrunch right up the middle. Remembering to put your finished edges to the inside and the outside. Okay. And then this is our last one for the bottom row. So we're just gonna do the same thing. Place our mesh out, one, two, three, four. Put something on there to hold our curl. Turn the clip away from us and do the same thing on the opposite end. One, two, three, four. Turn it over so your two curls are face down. Scrunch up the middle. And you're gonna place it into your pipe cleaner with those curls still face down. Now you can place it in the other way, but for this particular design, I um, chose to do them face down. Okay, now when we place in our last piece of mesh, we wanna make sure that to the right, we pull this piece of, of mesh to the right out so that it's laying over top of our last piece, the same way that all of our other pieces are laying. Okay, now on the ribbon tails, um, on the bottom row, I do um, six six inch pieces and six 12 inch pieces, or yeah, six 12 inch pieces of the pink and silver, the solid pink and the silver. So when you cut your ribbon tails for the bottom row, you will need six of the silver and six of the pink. You'll need those cut to 12 inches. And then you will also, if you wanna go ahead for the top row, you're gonna need three more of each of these um, at 12 inches. So let's see, six. Um, you'll need, actually I, I'm telling you wrong. You need eight 12 inch pieces total of the pink and the silver. And then you're gonna cut two of those in half to get your six inch pieces. So eight pieces silver, cut two of them in half to get your six inch pieces. Eight pieces pink, cut two of them in half to get your six inch pieces. Then on our design ribbon that we used, the puppy dog and the cupid, you will need six 12 inch pieces total of these two for the way that I have designed this particular wreath. Okay, and on this base row, I'll go around and show you the pattern where I've already put it in and then we'll complete the pattern on the other part. Um, I started with a six inch pink and then a six inch silver, a 12 inch pink, 12 inch silver, six inch pink, six inch silver, 12 inch pink, and our next will be a 12 inch silver. Now, when we come back in with our prints, we're going to put those over the six inch pieces only. So I put the puppy dog over top of the pink six inch, Cupid over top of the silver six inch, puppy dog over the pink six inch, and Cupid over the silver six inch. And we'll do the same thing when we finish up this side. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and pick up right here. We have a six inch pink here. 
so our, um, our next one here, we did, well, actually, we have a six inch silver and a six inch pink. So we're gonna come in now with 12 inch silver, 12 inch pink. So let's go ahead and do that. To add the ribbon, you just lay it out flat, scrunch it down the middle and V it back towards you so that your ends line up. It should look like that. And then you're just gonna place that in the next pipe cleaner. Now in these pipe cleaners where we're putting the 12 inch piece on the bottom, that is the only thing we're putting in that pipe cleaner. It's just that one piece of mesh and that one piece of ribbon. So we can go ahead and push down the extra. If you, have, if you have extra to cut off, cut off the extra. I cut mine a little bit too short tonight. Um, I only had the 20 inch white pipe cleaners. And when I cut them, I cut them a little shorter than I like. So I don't have any extra to cut off. But if you do, go ahead and cut off the extra and then just fold the piece in and give it a squeeze to tighten your ribbon in there. Okay, so next is pink. If anybody has any questions, whether you're watching the live or the replay later on Facebook or YouTube, just go ahead and leave me a comment or a message and I will answer you back. I do check those. Okay, so now we're putting in, we did our 12 inch silver, now our 12 inch pink. And then our next one here, we're going to be doing the six inch silver, the six inch pink. When you do your six inch pieces, you only dovetail one end. So only cut that V into one end. This end leave fat. When you are adding it to your uh, wreath base, you will scrunch on the straight edge. So you're just going to scrunch down the edge like that and then place it in to your pipe cleaner so that your piece of ribbon comes straight out the middle of that piece of mesh you're laying it on top of. Twist it good and tight so that it won't come loose. Now just fluff out your ribbon tail. If you're not sure how to dovetail, I've covered that in a bunch of my previous videos as well. Or if you leave me a message, I'm happy to go over it and explain it to you. Hey, Shauna. Yeah, it's becoming much, much more natural. Hey, honey. Okay, so we did the six inch silver. Now we're gonna do the six inch pink. Boy, I got these really small. That is definitely something I try not to do. But I'm gonna make it work because I don't believe in waste. I had the 20 inch white pipe cleaners and instead of just cutting them in half, I cut them in thirds for this bottom row. So if you do that and you don't have the 12 inch pipe cleaners, just cut them in half because in thirds is too short. Okay, and so now that we have done six, six, 12, 12, six, six, we are back to silver 12 inch. For some reason, that doesn't make sense. Let me take a look here and see. Make sure I have this right. Okay, so six inch, six inch, 12 inch, 12 inch, six inch, six inch. Aha, uh -huh, this one should have been a 12 inch. Yeah. Okay, sorry, gonna have to switch these out. This one should have been 12, which means that next pink one over there should have been six. 
you can tell if you've laid them in wrong, as I just did, um, when you get to the end of your pattern, if your pattern does not come out right. I knew I should have had a 12 inch silver and a 12 inch pink beside each other. And since it didn't come out that way, I knew I had messed up somewhere in my pattern. I just needed to go back and figure out where. So then this needs to be six inch. Now I do try to keep my patterns consistent because um, when I design and lay out how I'm placing my ribbons in, I try to keep my collar scheme evenly placed. So you have the same amount of gray throughout, the same amount of silver throughout. Six, six, 12, 12, six, six, 12. This one goes right here. And then this was an extra one. I probably should have got rid of my extra ones and maybe it would, I wouldn't have messed up. Okay, now everywhere that we put in a 12 inch piece, we're not adding anything else to that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pinch them down and squeeze them so they hold my ribbon securely. But we're still adding where the six inch pieces are, so we do not want to do that just yet. Okay. So, to go over again, since I made it so confusing, 12 inch pink, 12 inch silver, six inch pink, six inch silver, then start over. 12 inch pink, 12 inch silver, six inch pink, six inch silver just all the way around with that pattern. And then we're going to go over top of, we're gonna use three of our puppy dog and three of our cupids on the base. And we're gonna go over the pink six inch pieces with the gray puppy dog. And the cupid is going to go over the silver six inch pieces. So I'm gonna spin around here and just find, right here are my two six inch pieces. So the puppy dog over the pink. If we put the puppy dog over the silver and gray, we would have lumps of silver and gray all in one spot. So that's why I paired it with the pink. Then just puff up and curl out the ends of your ribbons to make them look nice and lay the way you want them to. And now we're gonna do the cupid over the silver. Thank you, Patricia. Hey, how are you tonight? I really like this combination too. It's very, very pretty. twist those because now when we add this piece over top of the six inch we're done with that pipe cleaner we can go ahead and push those down in cut them off and and push them down in and so this is what our base looks like you can still see down through to the wire but don't worry about that if you're actually trying this design um, because when we add our next layer of mesh and our next layer of ribbons, you will not be able to see. It will be nice and full. Cool. Um, the way that we're designing this gives us an overall 24 to 26 inch width. And then the final depth will be about 5 to 6 inches. So there will be plenty on there. We're not going to see that frame. <coughs> Thank you. I'm so glad that you're on here. Oh, <laughs> hi, Aunt Peg. Thanks for sharing, Patricia. I love this one. It, it's been a popular one for sure. This one's a customer order. I think it may be my third or fourth one. Okay, so now we're going to pull these. We're gonna work now on the six pipe cleaners in the middle. We're going to pull those to the outside. So just reach between the two pieces of mesh and pull them out. 
This way we can continue to build our layers on top of the other layers to get that nice full thickness. And then our sign will go in the middle of this design. Just work your way around. I like to just go ahead and pull all these pipe cleaners out before I start rolling my mesh. That way my pipe cleaner is out and ready and waiting on me. Okay, so we've got all six of them out now. We're going to do the same thing. This is, um, I forgot to tell you where I got the ribbons from. The solid pink as well as this glitter, the silver gray glitter came from craftoutlet.com. The puppy dog and the cupid ribbon, I ordered both of those off of Amazon. And then this burlap, um, poly burlap, is, I also purchased it from Craft Outlet. I think um, there's some other craft stores online that carry it, but that's, that's where I usually get mine. We're gonna do it the same way going to do cruffles again 16 to 17 inches fold it over two three four um patricia i think shoot me a message so i can confirm for sure but i think i have this one listed at 65 but remember anybody who watches my lives can get that 20 percent off let me see if I can find the code here because I don't want to tell you wrong. Yeah, it's uh, FB Live Thank You, all one word. You can use that to get 25% off of this design or any of my items in my Etsy shop. Okay, so now that we have made our cruffle, we are going to put it in our first pipe cleaner. This time we're going to go the opposite of the way we did on the base. So this one, the finished edge will go to the right and to the left. It looks like we're placing little bow ties all the way around the wreath. Don't want to pull this too tight because you don't want to sink it down into your mesh that is underneath. You want it to layer on top. Patricia, if you message me, or I'll probably see the comments and remember, I'll confirm that price for you and let you know. Um, my Etsy shop is Carla's Clever Crafts, all spelled with a K, all one word, uh, backslash Etsy.com, I think. <laughs> I'll, put the I'll put the link to my shop in the comments underneath in case anyone needs it after the live. Okay, just placing the next one in the same way. These cruffles on top are done exactly the same as the ones we did on the bottom. Now when I lay this top layer on, I like to make sure they're laying kind of like a bow, and then I like to line, up, line them up so they're touching all the way around each other. So while I'm on here, um, I wanted to mention, uh, you guys probably know about the giveaways that I'm doing, so probably, I'm not telling you this to remind you of that, I'm telling you this to um, tell you some issues that I've encountered. There is a lot of people with a lot of time on their hands who like to scam online, apparently. So I have been seeing where people in my giveaway post have been getting tagged and it looks like it's from me. And it says you're a winner and there's a link for you to go and put in your personal information. And I think it asks for financial information. So one thing, if you're watching my videos, do not do that. I will never have you click on a link and submit your information. I will only personally message you. Um, and there's no winners until I do the drawing. So until I'm on the live and do the drawing, there's no winners. So don't fall for those scams. And then the other thing that I've been noticing is there are a lot of fake accounts out there and they're created for the sole purpose of entering giveaways. <laughs> so when I do the drawing, 
I had to come up with a way to ensure that I had a real person who was going to be winning. Um, because if I have a bunch of fake profiles following my page, that doesn't help my business, that doesn't help me. And if I give a gift to, to a fake person who just added a bunch of fake profiles to my page, um, that doesn't help my customers or my supporters either. So when I do the live, I did some research on it, on how to combat fake Facebook profiles and users. And one of the things that they suggested is that basically have the person send you a picture with a specific word selected by you and the date on it. So when I select my winners, when I do the draw, random drawing and find out who the winners are, um, I will be asking for a mailing address so that I can, of course, send the prize and also a photograph. So that photograph will have a word selected by me and it will um, require that word and the date to be written on a piece of paper being held in the photo so that I can avoid scammers winning my giveaways. <laughs> Crazy. But there's lots of them because I go to their pages and it's just giveaway, 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 giveaway. And then it's the same people tagging each other over and over and over and over. So um, I actually seen a giveaway by another company and they had something on there about, you know, we won't fall for fake accounts. So then I started, I was like, uh oh, and I started looking at my own and yes, I have a bunch of fake accounts on mine. So, <clears throat> but I'm going to get around it. Okay, this is our last one. We had six pipe cleaners. So we have six of these beautiful, this mesh is so beautiful. It's one of my favorites to work with. It's called Poly Burlap Check Mesh. Um, but it is, I, I love the two tone colors of it. They have it in like yellow and white, pink and white. I think I even seen a red, white and blue on there, which I'm probably gonna order. Um, green and white, cranberry, red, so many colors and it, it's just, I think it's absolutely beautiful. It really offsets when you use it around the top. So that's what it looks like with our little mesh bows. And now we're going to do another layer of our ribbon. On the top, we are only using 12 inch pieces. dovetailed at both ends. Of course, I always dovetail my ribbons. All of these ribbons are wired. All of these are two and a half inches, except for the silver glitter. It is a one and a half inch ribbon. And then for our top row, we are going to crisscross in an X. The Keeping our patterns the same, so we're going to have the cupid with the silver. We're just going to do a small X. Well, no wait. We're going to do a rather bigger X. And then scrunch right down the middle of our X. Pinch the edges together, just like that. And place it in your first pipe cleaner. Now twist that in. Now I am not, even though we're not adding anything else into this pipe cleaner, we are going to add these cute little glitter hearts to the top of the pipe cleaners. So I'm not gonna push those down in. I'm gonna leave those up so we can add our final embellishment. Next, we're doing the puppy dogs with the pink. We're going to do the ribbons the exact same way. I did want to point out that in this case, the puppy dogs are going all different directions, so you don't have to pay careful attention to make sure you're keeping them all facing the same. Okay, and again, we just have an X. We're rotating the pattern. So puppy dog in pink, then Cupid and silver. Now we're 
back to Cupid and Silver. Make an X. Scrunch right down the middle. Give it a few good twists and fluff our ribbon out. We're back to the puppy dog and the pink. have um, a couple more lives. I'll be doing at least two more tomorrow. i um, going to be doing a country western cowboy, cowboy hat, cowboy boot, bandana wreath. And what is the other one? A watermelon. I'm going to be doing a watermelon slice summer wreath tomorrow. So if any of those sound fun, go ahead and make sure you join me. Our cupids are all going in the same direction, so we make sure that we're placing those the same way each time so you don't end up with uh, your cupids upside down. One more set of ribbons and then we'll be ready to do our sign. Okay, so this is what we have so far. We're going to stick our wreath right in the middle. Or, I'm sorry, our sign right in the middle of our wreath. So pretty. Okay, now I punched my holes in this before I went live, but I just used my metal hole punch. Even though this is MDF board, it works very well. I punched a hole at the top and then straight down at the bottom. And then I'm using my 26 gauge floral wire from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna cut off about six, or I'm sorry, about 12 inch pieces, 12 to 14 inches. Use my scissors, cause I don't see my wire cutters. I'm on live, honey, say hi. <laughs> what you need? Um, Mimi keeps taking the phone with her and not letting me watch it while she's on. Okay, go tell Papa. And Papa will have her share. And Anna can't do it. deal with it right now because I'm on live, okay? Those girls are uh, like sisters. They fight like sisters. Okay. So just put your wire through the hole. Line it up in the back so that it's even, or pretty close to even. Crisscross your wire right across the hole in the back that you made. 
and then twist your, pull it tight and twist your knot right above that hole. Make sure you keep the knot that you're twisting above that hole. It gives you more stability than if you were to have your knot on the side over here where it could move back and forth. <clears throat> Do the same thing for the bottom hole. Same thing, making sure you twist your knot over the hole. Okay, now figure out which way my cupids are facing so I don't have them upside down. And then put our sun in here. I'm going to work this pretty poly burlap mesh out around the outside of the sun and have the sun sitting kind of down inside of it. So I'm gonna get it positioned first. Okay, and then I'm gonna work my pieces of wire down through the mesh to the wire frame underneath, making sure that when I wrap the wire around the wire frame, I go around the two inside rings. This gives us more security for our sign than if we were to just go around one ring. it down just a little. You want to sink your sign clear to the back of your wreath. Um, so just pull it down so it's snug and it's not going to go anywhere, but don't pull too hard. I twist probably about 10 to 12 times or more. Flip off the excess wire. I leave um, I probably about, about an inch and a half, two inches there. Take that excess wire that you left on there and twist it around this inside ring on your frame. Keep twisting that until you get those sharp edges pushed up to the inside. We don't want those sticking out, poking somebody, scratching a door, or anything like that. We want that to be smooth. Okay, now we're just going to come up here to the top, do the exact same thing. Get your two pieces of wire, work down through your mesh to the frame, go around those inner two rings on the metal wreath form. Okay, now before I tighten that down, I see some of my mesh worked its way under the sign, so I wanna pull that back out. Don't want to mash that beautiful mesh. It's now I'm just going to pull it down even to what I did the bottom. Twist 10, 12, 15 times. I see some people only do two to three times. I don't know why I do so many times. I just feel like I'm more confident in the security of my sign staying on. And it's not really that difficult to do some extra twisting. Okay, cut off the excess. And again, wrap it around the inner ring just like we did the first time, making sure the pointed ends are up inside. Okay. And then our last little finishing touch on this, other than um, I'll refluff the ribbon tails I messed up, is we're gonna take these little glitter hearts And in each of the six sections we were last working in, we have two pipe cleaner ends. We're gonna put a little pink heart right on the end of each of those. The pipe cleaner has a wire in it, so you can actually just slowly, not bending your wire, push that wire right up into these little foam glitter hearts. Now the foam glitter hearts came from the Dollar Tree. You get a pack of 24, $1.25. Um, I have done this with gluing them and without gluing them and honestly I feel like without the glue works better. So I quit using the glue. 
and they're very secure. They stay on there very well because you can push them down on pretty far. Okay. So you're just going to do this all the way around. Again, you know, push it in just a little bit at a time. Oops, I came out the side of my heart. We don't want to do that. Um, a little bit at a time so that you don't bend your wire because if you bend your wire then it becomes difficult there to get it to feed up through there far enough and you want it to go a good little ways because that's what gives you the security without the need for any glue Remember, anybody watching um, on replay later, either on YouTube or on Facebook Live, please uh, leave me a comment that says hashtag replay so that I know who's watching. If you have any feedback or suggestions or questions, leave that in the comments as well. And if you like my videos and you haven't already, um, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is Carlos Clever Crafts, all with a K. And my Facebook page, which is the exact same, Carlos Clever Crafts, all with a K. I'm pretty excited that, um, I only have 14 videos so far on YouTube, and today I think, I'm pretty sure that I hit 100 subscribers. If not 100, very, very close to it. I think the last I looked was like 90 some. That's pretty exciting for someone who's just learning all of this and has no idea what she's really doing. <laughs> okay, let's so we do this one, and then we have one more set. Remember, if you're doing this, um, feed those hearts down on there slowly, pushing just a little piece of the pipe cleaner in at a time. And try not to do what I did on the one. Try not to push it um, out the side or the back of your heart. Try to go straight up the middle. Heart belongs to me. Now that sign could easily also be used for a kitty cat. We could just get some kitty cat ribbon and uh, use that. If you didn't want the Cupid Valentine's Day ribbon, you could find another pink and gray and substitute in there. This could easily be a year-round wreath. I think it could be year-round even with Cupid because uh, everybody loves their pets and everybody's pets loves them. So I think it could be year-round or every day. Um, so that's it. If anybody has any questions, just let me know. And thank you guys so much for watching and supporting me as I try to grow my business. Thank you, Aunt Peg. I'm glad you like it. I'm pretty sure I have um, this one still available. Um, I love you guys, Aunt Peg. Thank you guys for watching so much. And I'll be back on tomorrow. Have a good night.